All right, so so far, the questions that we've written have been ones where students have written methods. In the next example, I actually want to go backwards towards the beginning of the course and talk about a couple of features that are useful when you want students to write snippets, right? So let's say I want a student to write a snippet of code rather than an entire method. So this is like for the first few weeks where they don't even know how to write a method definition, right? So how do I write a problem at that point, right? So there's two issues that we're gonna encounter here, right? One is that they can't write a method declaration. So the question can't include a method declaration, or if it does, you gotta like give them the, you gotta give them some help, okay? The second issue is how do they actually return a result, right? Because they don't use, no use how to return. They don't know how to return yet, okay? Um, so let's write a new question and I'm gonna call it, uh, we'll call it print sum. It's indicative of the name of the question, okay? Uh, or what we're about to do. Um, and now again, I'm gonna add my normal uh, Java question here. Uh, add it. Um, let's say, uh, given two int variables x and, well, let's call them first and second that are already declared and initialized, print their sum. That's it, right? No method to declare. We really, this is like a one line solution, right? Um, now, okay, so there's our, uh, let's put the metadata that we need. So we're gonna say name is equal to uh, print sum, uh, author is me, and the version is uh, that's the first edition in June 2021. Okay, so now, you know, in the past we've used this wrap annotation, but we're actually not going to use it here because wrap, what wrap does is it creates a simple template that essentially takes the code inside the class and sticks it inside a class wrapper so that we can compile it and execute it that way. There's other times when you actually want the, to specify exactly where the template should begin and end uh, a lot more carefully. Um, so let's do that here. So essentially, I'm going to create a, uh, a method. In this case, I can mark it static because students aren't going to see it, right? Um, you know, I'll say public static, um, and I could have this be void, uh, but in this case, and actually void is fine in this case because it's going to print, right? Um, okay, public static uh, void, we'll say, um, okay, hold on a sec. Public static void, uh, print sum. Uh, int first, int second. Now here, again, we're, we're using the capability of the test tool to generate inputs for us, right? Um, so this is going to be passed a whole bunch of different random uh, ints as its first and second argument. Um, and all we need to do is print the sum, right? So what I'll do is I'll say system.out.println first plus second. So that's the solution, right? Let's go ahead and actually validate this and see what happens, right? Because the problem, I think this will validate. Uh, oh, focus is true, uh, put test focus. Um, like I said, I think, oh, no, we had the same problem we had before, sorry, where is that? I don't know why it does this, it's so annoying. Okay, imports go above the description, cool. Okay, like I said, I'll fix that error message, it's confusing, I've just started to notice it, but. You know, a lot of times I write, a lot of times, I'll, I'll be honest, a lot of times I set up the question first and then write it later. Okay, so it looks like I forgot to unfocus combine minus two, so that was our last example. So let's go ahead and just take the focus tag off this guy so that we're not confusing ourselves. Um, and then we'll run test focus again. And you'll see that this did validate, right? So the question is, is, is legitimate. Now you might be wondering, like, this is interesting, like, what is the output from this? It doesn't return anything, okay? But one of the cool things about this framework is that uh, submissions are expected to match the solution identically. If the solution prints, and this is something important to keep in mind as you start to develop uh, questions using this framework. If your solution prints, the submission is going to be expected to print in the same place in the same output. So if the solution prints, in addition to comparing the return values and doing some other things, we also compare the output to, to standard out, right? Now, if this, the, this, for the purposes of debugging, student code is allowed to print if the solution does not. That allows them to do things like display the value of variables if they want to do some print style debugging while they're working on the problem. But if your solution prints, 
then the submission has to print in the same way. Okay, so now, you know, again, th this, this question is fine, except for the fact, there's a thunderstorm coming through here today, oh, cool. Except for the fact that we're expecting students to write this entire class declaration, including a class declaration and a static void public uh, print sum method with the method declaration and parameter list. And like, these are probably students on their second day of class who are like, what on earth just happened to me? This is terrible, okay? Um, so we don't want to expect them to do this. So here's how we mark the part that they're supposed to do, right? Is that we use this special comment. Uh, we mark it template start, and then we mark it template end. Uh, these are special magic comments, and they need to look exactly like this. They should always be on their own line. And the idea, and it's, it's a little confusing, I guess, because the template is going to look like this, and then it's going to have a spot for the contents, and then it's going to look like this. So it's really, these should maybe be called like content start or content end, but it's too late, right? So essentially, uh, you enclose the code you expect students to write in these template start and template end comments, okay? Let's uh, validate it again and see what happens. The question is still correct, so it should still validate, no problem. The thing that's different is that the code that students are expected to write is going to shrink, right? And so again, if I go over here, now you'll see that the solution is a single line of code rather than you know, this, this much, uh, much more grandiose thing, right? So that's one way of writing a question. Um, you know, is that if you want students to print some, okay? Now, let, let's look at a couple of other examples, and I'm just gonna keep working within the same question framework just to avoid having to set up a bunch of other ones. I wanna show you some strategies here, right? So, so what if you wanted to do something like say, you know, given first and second, add their uh, result together into a variable called third. Could you do that, right? Yes, you can. Right? So here's what the, the student code would look like. It would look like this. It would say int third is equal to first plus second. Okay? But now we have a problem, which is that the method is void and it doesn't print anything. So this is now the proverbial tree falling in the forest. It literally has no output that we can identify. And so there's no way to test it. Right? If you try to validate this, uh, I, think the, I think you'll actually get an error from the testing harness being like basically this doesn't print and it doesn't return. So I got nothing, right? I really don't have any uh, anything to do with this. Yeah, what does it say? It says, oh, incorrect code. Well, yeah, because everything will pass these test suites, right? But like it doesn't print, doesn't return, right? So we're, we're stuck. Um, you know, I, I could take this out and it would still pass, right? Um, so in this case, sometimes you gotta get a little bit creative, right? So here's one idea. What if we had it return third, right? So we'll say return, third, right? Now the return is outside the template tag, so it's not code we expect students to write. They probably have never seen return before, right? Um, but now what's gonna happen here is that this is gonna allow the code to work, right? Even though, you know, uh, on some level what, so basically what we've done is we made the thing that students were doing that wasn't observable, which was declaring a variable called third and, and setting its value appropriately, we've made it observable. Right. Uh, another way to do this, if you wanted to, and this is uh, good sometimes. So let's say you, the, the question was declare a variable called foo and set its value to, uh, you know, declare a variable int called foo and set its value to 88 and declare a variable called bar of type, um, not string, uh, boolean and set its value to false, right? How would we do that, right? So here's one way to do that. So here's the student code. Uh, again, if you look over here at the solution and, uh, on, um, on my screen, uh, you'll see that the solution there was still a single line of code, right? Um, so now let's do this example of ask, just asking them to declare and initialize variables, right? So uh, let's see here. So what did I say? I said foo was an int and then boolean bar is equal to false, right? Now the question is, well, I mean, there's one int and one boolean. So you could probably find a way to return these <clears throat> in some way, but there's a simpler solution, which is just print them, right? Let's do this. Foo, system.out.println bar, right? Remember, the print statements are not what you expect students to write, 
right? You only expect them to write the code inside that template start and template end. But essentially, this has a similar effect to the one that we just described, which is that it, it causes this thing that students are doing that normally would not be observable, which is declaring and initializing a variable, it makes it observable, right? And this will also catch a lot of other common mistakes, right? It will catch mistakes like calling the, you know, uh, calling the variable the wrong name, right? Because if you, instead of creating foo, if you create food with a D, then the code below the template won't compile. This error can be slightly strange to students, but you know, it's kind of the best we can do at this point, right? Um, so that's, this is another option, right? Um, okay, so, so good options in terms of uh, getting students uh, very, very early on when they're just writing, uh, writing snippets. Now, here, there, there's another option here, and I wanna, wanna at least uh, discuss it, right? Which is this idea of using a, um, a using starter code, right? So let's imagine, okay, so let's, uh, now I don't want to do print sum. I'll just, I'll just call this method sum. I'm not keeping the description in sync, okay? So just, you know, uh, bear with me here. I'm, I'm trying to optimize for time. Um, now imagine that I want to just return first plus second. I pretty much already have this problem um, that I've done a little bit differently. And what I'll do is I'll do, uh, I'll set it up like this, right? And if you'll see what's gonna happen is that it will validate very happily. Um, now I'm going back to having, uh, to setting up the question so the students actually have to write the entire question description, which is not what I want, okay? Right? Um, so here's the thing. If I use wrap, what happens is, and I'll import that, uh, they still are gonna to have to write that method declaration, okay? Now, there's this sort of intermediate point where maybe we started to talk about methods, but maybe students aren't that uh, familiar with them, or maybe we just wanna give students some exposure to methods even before we start talking about them. So what I can do is there, there's an argument to wrap where I can have it automatically generate starter code for a student, right? And so let's see how that's going to work, right? So this shouldn't change the semantics of the question and the correctness of the validation. It's still gonna be revalidated, which is fine. Um, but when we look at the report, what we're gonna see is now, here's starter code that we would be provided to the student. And the, you, know, you can kind of guess at how we generated this. We took the solution and we basically ripped out all the contents and returned, and we, we, we give them something that compiles, but it's wrong, right? They need, they need to wrap it up, right? But particularly when they're just getting comfortable with methods, this can be an appropriate uh, approach because you know, they don't necessarily, they don't have to understand how to declare the method, right? They just fill in the contents, right? They just basically fill in the blank, right? This approach is actually very similar to the approach that's used by most problems on, that at least the problems I've been working on, on codingbat.com, right? Which is a great source of problems. Um, but what they do there is typically they just give you the starter they, they give you the method to, the declaration and your job is to fill in the contents, right? So if you wanna write a problem that has that approach, you can do that. Just another strategy, right? For dealing with these intermediate points where we're kind of in between students being able to write complete uh, classes um, and, and method declarations and all of the Java stuff, right? We're sort of transitioning them and there may be a point at which it's appropriate to give them a problem with some starter code uh, to, to begin with, um, this really only works for methods, right? Uh, there's no real starter code for a class. By that point, we expect students to just be able to, to start from scratch. So, so a few other strategies for writing these, these very, very early questions, which are really important, right? I don't want you to think like, ah, oh, who cares, right? Uh, we can actually use a lot more of these questions than we have, right? Um, so we have the approach of using the template tags, which we looked at. Um, we also have the approach of putting some code outside of the template tags if we need to do things like have them do variable declarations, right? Which normally we wouldn't be able to test because it doesn't produce an observable result. So we looked at some strategies for taking things that normally aren't observable and making them observable. And then we also looked at this way of generating starter code automatically for problems where that's appropriate. 